Hello everyone, I'm Flavia. Today I'm going to talk about factor-inducing pull requests. Everything begins with modern code review, a process driven by reviewing code changes and available in platforms such as GitHub, for example. As you can see in the figure, an author can submit code changes through commits like commits 1 to 3 in the figure, these commits are organized into multiple lines of development, named branches, such as Apache Master and Zymap Command Out Recovery. After opening a pull request, a reviewer can inspect the code changes, providing review comments about issues or suggestions. In this context, we realize that the result of that reviewing discussions may comprise factoring in commits 4 to 9. So, our main objective is to get an in-depth understanding of refactoring due simple requests. But, but what are they? Now, I'd like to, to draw your attention to our definition for refactoring due simple requests. For us, a pull request is a refactoring inducing if refactorings are performed in subsequent commits after the initial commit as a result of the reviewing process or spontaneous improvements by the pull request author. To clarify, this figure shows a refactoring inducing pull request consisting of three initial commits, commits one to three and six subsequent commits performed after the pull request openness, that is, commits four to nine. In three subsequent commits, you can see factorings. Therefore, our study uh, explores differences and similarities between pull requests based on the, the refactorings performed and commits after the initial ones. It's worth mentioning that there's a, a novel definition because Previous research on refactoring, code review, and pool-based development have considered refactoring performed as, the, as from the second commit. Now, I'd like to move on to our study design. These re research questions drive our investigation. Firstly, we explored the presence of refactoring-inducing pull requests. Then, we investigated quantitative aspects related to code reviewing to find out similarities and differences between pull requests based on the presence of refactorings. Lastly, we manually examined review comments and discussions of um, a sample of refactoring inducing pull requests to validate the occurrence of refactorings induced by code reviewing. So, let's start by the first step. Uh, first of all, we mined merged pull requests from Apache repositories and GitHub. Uh, we considered merged pull requests because we could analyze completed review process. In the step two, we ran a state-of-the-art tool for many refactorings performed in merged pull requests from step one. At that, uh, at that point, we also checked the authored date of the, of the commits against the opening date of their pull requests to identify initial and subsequent commits. After this step, we got an answer to our first research question. That is, how common are refactor inducing pull requests? In step three, we collected attributes related to code reviewing for all merged pull requests, having at least one review. For choose the attributes, uh, we performed a compilation of 18 works. I'd like to, to show this, this eight, these attributes. In the table, you can see a few attributes such as the number of aided and deleted lines that form the culture and the creation date and merge date of a pull request, which the difference indicates the time to merge a pull request. So we began to think about a strategy to better investigation, investigate our sample. Then unsupervised machine learning emerged from our journey. 
As a result, we found association we're learning that identifies a natural structures named association rules derived from the characteristics of data. For example, pull requests having a high number of review comments tend to have a high number of reviewers. So, association rule learning supported us in the formulation of more accurate hypotheses on differences and similarities between refactor inducing and non refactor inducing pull requests. In this step, firstly, we performed a, a statistical testing of hypotheses formulated in, in step four. After this analysis, we got in the answer to our second research question. Uh, that is, how do refactor-inducing pull requests compare to non-refactor-inducing pull requests? Then, we carried out a manual inspection of a sample of refactor-inducing pull requests in order to answer our third research question. Is refactor-induced by code reviews? For that, three developers intending to mitigate researcher bias during 30 days manually examined Review discussions and validated the minor refactoring as a subsample of refactoring those simple requests. These are, are, are the samples considering data analysis. Uh, our quantitative analysis considered data from a lot of merged pull requests from 84 distinct Apache repositories while our manual inspection was performed on a stratified sample of almost 300 pull requests. Now, I'd like to focus on our findings. So how common are refactoring those in pull requests? We found more than 30% of refactoring those in pull requests in our sample. In the figure, you can see the histogram of Refactoring is positively skewed. Uh, even presenting outliers, a low number of refactoring is quite frequent. This results in low significant uh, refactoring activity induced in, in pull requests. For us, this is a motivating uh, result. Moving to on the next research question, we investigated how do refactoring inducing compare and uh, non refactor inducing pull requests, we found that refactor inducing pull requests comprise significantly more code churn, file changes, subsequent commits, review comments, and discussion, and time to merge than non refactor inducing pull requests. This is an expected result uh, in, terms, in terms of code churn, since previous research also found quite similar results. For instance, we confirm that refactoring code has significantly higher size related metrics and that more, more file chains comprise more chains during code review. Therefore, we expected that reviewing refactoring inducing pull requests might require more subsequent chains in turn denoted by, by subsequent commits in contrast to non refactoring inducing pull requests. Moreover, and consider refactoring how refactoring how improvements to the code our finds also reinforce the recent research that found that the most changes during code review are driven by reviewing comments and discussion. Our findings also reinforce the influence of refactoring on time to merge, concluding that time for reviewing and performing refactoring both impact the time to merge. About the number of reviewers, we found no statistical evidence that is related to refactoring inducing. So this, this topic needs really needs further investigation. When, when investigating a refactoring inducing by code review, we found almost 60% of refactoring inducing pull requests in which at least one refactoring was induced by review comments. Specifically, we found that rename and change types in the instance are the most induced by code review. By the way, readability is a common motivation cited by reviewers when suggesting rename refactorings. 
In practice, the main implications of our study are a few actionable uh, directions for researchers, practitioners, and to builders. First, we recommend that future study design uh, on modern code review with pull requests can make a distinction between refactoring inducing and non refactoring inducing pull requests, or at least consider the different characteristics when sampling pull requests. For pull request managers, uh, for instance, we suggest that they can invite more reviewers when a pull request becomes a factor inducing to share the, the expected increase in, in review workload and the knowledge of design changes to more team members. For two builders, we suggest the development of, for example, bots to recommend reviewers based on some criteria to help the pull request managers when inviting additional reviewers. Um, to, to finish, thanks for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions.